Okay, we're going to walk through the learning activity for Unit 10, uh, which is in Flutter again, and we're doing a pizza list. And again, we're kind of recreating some of the previous assignments we did in Android, so we can kind of see how they look in Flutter also. So, similar to what we've done before, um, we have to accept this assignment in GitHub. So we go there. Uh, you might have to accept it and wait a sec, refresh your screen. Eventually, you should get a URL here for your project. And we're going to copy that URL, of course. We're going to go over here and we're going to open, go new project from version control uh, here. And if you're in the other one, you have to th get the dot dot arrows and do it. Paste your URL here, clone this. And I'm going to open it up in a new window here. Um, when you open it up, um, it you should it should ask you to run uh, flutter.pubget uh, here. Um, so again, when I open up main dot dart, uh, it says pubget pubget has not been run. Get dependencies. So you have to download some dependencies for Flutter when you bring in these projects, uh, because otherwise you get a whole bunch of errors here. So if you do that, watch for that, uh, and wait a sec to download those dependencies, and then. Uh, you shouldn't have any errors in this uh, example. Okay, so this is our working version. Uh, now, your version, uh, I mistakenly set out an extra main uh, file here. So watch, your version shouldn't have a, it should just have main.dart, nothing else. If you do have this other new main, that was just a temporary file for me, you can just hit delete uh, on that one. So. Okay, and then when we're building this again, we can uh, put them on our Android emulator, but I often find it easier when testing just to run this in Chrome. So I'm going to switch the build here to Chrome and hit run. Uh, it should build this uh, down here and then in a sec open up a Chrome window for me. So I'll just wait uh, a couple seconds for that to do. So now I'll open up this order, uh, this window, it's just, a, it's just a scaffold. So again, a scaffold, if I look at my app, it will have, let's, let me scroll down to the actual the scaffold here, an app bar at the top, uh, a body, and a floating action bar. So again, this is the uh, app bar at the top, just with the title. This is the body, and right now I'm just displaying a text widget here to say, and then is a button here. The button doesn't do anything. It does uh, just print off some text here uh, for now. So that's the what it will run here yeah, by default, uh, hopefully, uh, without you making any changes. So let's look at what we're required to do then. Um, so again, remember when you bring it up, download. Uh, it, you can make sure you run pubget when asked, and be patient. All the errors should go away. Uh, here. Now, as we're doing this, you might want to bring up this Flutter Common Widgets uh, file we have because we'll be using this. You might want to also bring up another project, like here's the currency project we had. Sometimes it's nice to look at past examples uh, when you're coding again. So you might have, want to have access to those. So the first thing we're going to do is create a new class. Now, normally you do this in another file. And in fact, in the bonus challenge, I have you do that in another file. But uh, to make it easier here to get started, we're just going to create it in this one. In fact, in Dart, you can have lots of uh, classes in your file. So here's one class, here's another class, here's another class. Uh, here, and th This is the class we're already, already working on. So if I go down to the very end of the file and uh, outside all the classes, I can declare a new class. So just to declare a new class, uh, call it pizza. and start putting your attributes in it. So again, you're going to want to set up these uh, these attributes here. You need a string for toppings, a uh, string for descriptions, uh, price, size, uh, and null safety says you have to initialize all those. So again, uh, just start putting in your string. Um, what was the first one? I think is toppings uh, here. And again, uh, you get this error here that'll say uh, non-null instance of toppings must be initialized here. Uh, you can also, as a suggestion, they could say you might want to add late to it. We don't want to do that late stuff. We just want to initialize it to some empty string just so it's not null. If 
for null safety. So fill out the rest of your uh, stuff. You want to add these two um, arrays to it and then create a constructor. Remember the constructor is just the name of the file. Uh, it's a but we're going to add some parameters to it and stuff. So why don't you work on that a little bit. So, okay, hopefully you've done some of that. So here's my, uh, I declared my attributes. Uh, I pasted in these arrays, one's price and one size. And again, we're going to use this size as integer, and we're using, going to use that in index into these. So zero is going to be small, medium, large. So there's better ways of doing this map and stuff, but we'll just keep it relatively simple and try this. Now, your constructor, I wanted you to add a um, uh, add the toppings and the size. So we have the toppings and the size in our constructor here. And you're probably used to doing this, uh, giving them some value here, and then saying this dot toppings equals toppings what's passed in. So again, this, the toppings variable up here, uh, you can see these are highlighted. This one refers to the item closest in scope, uh, which is in this constructor, this toppings. But if I say this dot toppings, it refers where this means it's in this class, so it goes up here in this. So we're setting this toppings into this toppings here. We do this a lot in uh, here. So there's actually a shortcut in Dart and some other language, and you can say this dot toppings right up there, and this dot size, and then you don't need to do this. Uh, it does it. It brings uh, and initializes this dot topping. So you can do this as a shortcut in Dart. You frequently see this. Now we do want to also initialize the uh, price and the um, uh, the description. So just set the price based on uh, the size and index in this array. So you say that sub uh, size here to get the size from this uh, to get the price. So if the size is zero, you'll get 799. That'll be a small. Now, and then the description, you just want to create a description uh, here. Um, so let's create some text. Uh, so maybe I'll use the pizza size. What may I say a small uh, pepperoni pizza or whatever. So I want to take the sizes um, in words. So again, I'm going to use the size here. I really shouldn't make this into a map or something, but sorry, I haven't done that. And then I want to add in maybe the toppings uh, here. Uh, and then I want to add in, uh, and maybe I want uh, a little space in there. Um, let's put a dash so we can just see it for now. And the toppings, and then I'll just put the word pizza. So it'll say something like a medium pepperoni pizza uh, for that description. Uh, and this is what we're going to kind of display in some of our buttons. So again, just it doesn't really matter what you put as that. Um, so set that up. Now, uh, once you've done that, we're going to want to create a list of our pizza object uh, here. So again, going back up here, this is our main class uh, that we're doing. So again, not in this home page, but in this my home page state. This is our method to add a pizza I have. This is our build method where we're building our actual stuff. And this is our pizza class afterwards uh, here. So I often like to just put a comment up here. Uh, I just draw a line. So it reminds me, I really don't want to modify anything above that. That's where I want to be. Uh, so we're, so again, declare your um, list uh, in there. Uh, and then try to do a list builder. So down here where we're going to do a pizza object. Again, remember we have our scaffold as the app bar and that ends right here. And then we have the body and that ends there. And then we have floating action bar. So for the body here, you want to replace this with a uh, list builder uh, here. So you want to look at what a list builder works on here. Some dis descriptions. You might also want to go to your this common widget area scroll down to list and here's a sample list builder constructor and then we often put list tiles I won't do that initially I'll just put some text in here but you want to set this up so I'm gonna why don't you pause this and work on that a little bit and see how it goes so I've added the list up here 
uh, inside my home page state, right? Uh, in the same kind of con scope as where my build method is and my add pizza method is. Uh, because I'll need to use this in both of those uh, areas. So inside build, again, the scaffolding, I found the body. And rather than uh, just a text, I added a list builder. I just, I just cry, grab this sample text here and pasted it in here. Uh, now, for the item count, we have to put in how many pizzas are in our order. So you can grab the size of this variable here, put that in here uh, for this. Uh, so we'll do the length of that. And then the item builder is where we build the items and we're given the position in the array. Uh, and for now, I'm just going to just do something simple. I'm just going to do a text widget um, and then have some text. Uh, pizza number and then maybe put in the position so I can see uh, and I need to do that to string to get it to uh, be in here properly um, see if I can spell things correctly okay so I'm just gonna do the text here to see how that works uh, later on I'm going to add um, come back here and add a list tile and a card and actually display the actual pizza here but I just want to do that as a placeholder here and I'm going to run this now again uh, it should update automatically so if I go here it should uh, show an updated version here so again there's nothing here because uh, there's nothing in my uh, the length of my uh, list is zero so it's not displaying anything here uh, now I want to work on this add button. So right now this add button calls this. So let's do this. I'm going to, again, put these things on hold for now and jump down to this floating action bar and try to get that working a little bit. So um, let's look at the floating action bar. So this again is in my scaffold. Here's app bar. Here's the body. And here's the floating action bar. I kind of separate those by spaces. I like to do that sometimes uh, to see them. Sometimes I put in little comments in here to help me. Uh, uh, he starts there. Again, I, generally later on, I actually like to move a lot of this stuff into separate um, uh, action. Uh, so this is my floating action button. I'm just going to do that. So see if you can see, parse this a little better. Okay, so down in my floating action button here, uh, on press, so there's an icon that displays the add icon. That's what the little plus is down here. That's the add icon uh, here. So it just displays icon. This tool clip is actually left over from earlier. I'm just going to get rid of that. Uh, and then on press calls add pizza. And I added this method up here, void add pizza. Uh, it's supposed to... Uh, at display a dialog window and call it right now it just prints out add pizza so we're going to add the code to display a dialog so we're going to pop up a window here so how do we pop up a window uh, here we've got to call show dialog here so I'm going to move this in here um, and call show dialog uh, for this I have to end with a semicolon there um, it's going to show a dialog. It needs some context, and again, that's just uh, to show where we're popping up. So we're going to pop it up inside the current context. I don't need to change that at all. So it'll pop it up on the current string. Uh, the builder here, again, builds with this context. You don't have to worry about that. So this is kind of all set here. What we do have to do is specify this interior thing, and generally, I mean, we're building a dialog and we're doing a dialog window here. Now, just a note, there are other types of dialogues. Uh, so there are, um, let me expand this a little bit. Um, there's a simple dialogue, a pop-up, if we just wanted to f select a couple options. So if like, we're just getting the size or something like that, we could do that. An alert dialogue pops up and we can do that. And those are easy. They have some set things you can set up here to do, a little easier to do. But again, we want to do a more complicated dialogue because we want to ask, for the toppings and we're going to ask for the size and stuff like that so we're going to do this more complicated dialogue unfortunately so we're going to do that uh, so again we've done this uh, here now we're in the dialogue class so the dialogue class here 
Um, let's just see. Oh, do I show? Yeah, the dialogue class just has one thing: a child, a widget. I didn't have. I don't have that. So let's just change this now. So it's going to have one thing: a child, and I'm going to do a widget here. Uh, so I'm not need to place a widget. So what do we want in our child? Uh, I mean, our dialogue uh, here. So we're going to want a text field, a drop-down button. Uh, and then an elevated button uh, so they can add. So we're going to need three things. We'll probably want them vertically spaced, so we're going to put a column in here. So I'm going to actually just do the text. Uh, well, actually, let's just start with a simple text uh, to start with. Text, uh, build your pizza. To see if that's going to work uh, here. I'm going to put a comma after that. Um, so let's see if that's actually worked. So again, it should automatically hot update. So if I click on here and it's updating now, um, now I hit the plus, it pops up this text, build your pizza, click off of it, it's gone. So that's good. So that's working, the dialogue is popping up. But now I want to put a column here. So again, since I have this text, I want a column as the child of my dialogue. So I'm going to right click on that and do show context in this wrap with column so it'll add a column with children a bracket and it'll put my text in here and now i can add more children in here uh, for that so again if i right click on anything and show context i can surround it with things so it's a good way to do add a column again i could just type that in but uh, sometimes it's just quicker this way so i have a text uh, and so why don't you stop now and try to do these things at a text field? You may want to look back to what how we did text field. In fact, you can look at this whole thing. We did a column earlier. Uh, we did a text uh, field. We did an elevator button uh, here. So look back at what you did last time and see if that. Remember with text fields uh, here, you have to add a variable, a text edit controller. Uh, for that and you can use that in a text field to see if would you pause this again and see if you can build this dialogue so I've done some stuff I've added a text field here uh, with a controller uh, and so I uh, just copied it from an earlier one. Again, you want to declare a controller up here, a text edit controller for this. Uh, the, and so again, this is going to be my pizza toppings uh, here. So I'm going to specify that uh, here. So um, I'm actually, besides saying pizza, build your own pizza, I'm going to also add a text field that says uh, enter enter your toppings. So they can enter that okay and i have a text field that does that tied to this then i pasted an elevated button again uh you can go over here to um the common widgets grab that elevated button paste that in there or again you can look at one of yours that we did before here's an elevated button over here you can paste that in here so i paste that in here now for the on press, we want to do something right now. I'm just going to print out that the button was pressed for while well, I'm testing. And a child is generally a text widget, what we're going to display on the button. So um, this is going to be to place the order. Uh, or, yeah, place this order. Okay, now let's see how this is going to look. So again, I shouldn't have to update it. Hopefully it'll be already updated. If I go here, um, here I hit this. So it says build your own points to enter your toppings. I could type in my toppings here. It's a little right justified, but maybe I want mushrooms or something like that. Uh, it doesn't matter. I'm just doing a text field. And then a button here. Again, I want to change some of the layout here, but that's okay. Place this order. And again, it just says button pressed. So when I hit this button, I want to add this pizza to the order. So let's look at that um, for this. So once the button is pressed, I don't necessarily want to just print that out. I want to add the pizza to the order. So how do I add a pizza to the order? So I have this list called pizzas in order. So why don't you go through and put in the code to add an item 
to that list. So you have to call the pizza constructor to see if you can do that. See if you can pause this and do that. So, uh, um, Okay, so I've called pizzas in order, and I did dot add, and then I created a new pizza with a constructor. I go down here, look at my pizzas. There's a constructor. I suppose my toppings and the size. Uh, so toppings, I just hard coded mushroom in here and put in two uh, for this. Uh, now eventually, I want to get that from here, but that's it's a good place to start, I think. So now. If I just hit add pizza, it doesn't matter what I order because it's going to order a mushroom pizza. Uh, I can hit this, 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 um, and look. And it's not adding it to the pizza list here uh, for that. So um, we have to look at a couple things here. Uh, it looks like I'm hitting the button here. I'm creating the pizza. Why isn't this working? So if you remember, I don't know if I put in a hint here. Um, Whenever we update stuff, we need to uh, set the state uh, there for this. So if I'm um, pressing um, this button, adding a pizza to the list, I should add this to the actual uh, pizza uh, order form.
Okay. So I've got the value in here as my pizza size. Um, often if you see an error like this and the error is inspect or annotate, there's no good thing. That usually means maybe a comma or some sort of formatting thing. So like here I know I go, oops, I'm supposed to have a comma after each of these attributes and that's the problem. So often if some item is ah uh, and you look at it, look at the line before and see if it's ending values. Okay. Now let's talk about this uh, here. Um, Now, uh, when when this uh, drop-down menu is changed, we're given a value, and we're going to try to save that in our pizza stuff. But again, this is one place where this null safety gets us a little bit. So uh, we can add a null check to this uh, as an option. So again, we're not 100% sure this this is not going to be null. It's coming from a drop-down list, so I'm relatively certain it shouldn't be null. Uh, so I'm going to just add this check here, and it'll add an exclamation point. And what that'll do is it'll check that this is not null before it assigns there. And if it is null, it'll crash. So I should really be maybe doing like some if uh, if it's null, I'll do something else. But I'm just going to put this in for now. So, and I'm pretty confident because this is coming from a drop-down uh, uh, menu that this won't be null uh, for this. So the exclamation point just says check this make sure it's not null before assigning it to this uh non-nullable integer so okay so that's our layout okay so i cleaned up some of the formatting here sometimes if you go to code especially if it's all compiling and you say uh reformat file that'll clear up the format sometimes i go in manually and just reset some of the stuff so let's see if this is going to work so we hit this uh, we can enter a type of pizza we want uh, here. So maybe I want um, some onions and some peppers. And I want a medium pizza. And you just notice that didn't update, but well, I switched it from small to medium. So we'll watch that. Place the order, and it'll say large onion and, pe and pepperoni pizza. So it still said large here. Why did it say large? So I saved the pizza size, selected that. On change, I saved the value in pizza size, pizza size by variable up here. Um, but when I create the order in the Elevate bot, I still specified a two here. I want to specify the pizza size there. So I'm going to use my pizza size now variable. So when I create a new pizza, I'm going to use the pizza toppings text and the pizza size here. So let's try that again. Okay. New pizza, uh, onions. I'm going to switch this to a medium pizza. Place the order, medium pizza. Let's do another one. Test, and I'm going to do small and place the order. Small, so that looks good uh, for this. Okay, so that's the, so I got my dialogue working here. Now, it should be noticed that, notice when I do this, um, and I go from small to let, let's say large, it still says small here. So usually that means I'm not doing a set state uh, when I update that. So you think to fix that, I would say, like, when I change the size here, I should surround this with a set state. And that should change this. So I run this again. Now I switch this to large. It should update the state, but it doesn't. What the problem is, it's updating the state for the whole context, this whole app, uh, and that is not controlling this little thing. So now you don't have to, you can just leave that be. Uh, but if that bothers you, there is a bonus challenge here, and you have to surround this with a stateful builder uh, here. So I, I'll just show you how to do that in case you want to, but you don't have to. So if we really want to do this, our whole um, drop-down menu here has to be surrounded with this stateful builder. So I'm just going to surround it with another uh, app. I'm just going to say a center app for now. Uh, and then I'm going to change that to a stateful builder uh, here. So, And then in a stateful builder, I need to do have a builder uh, option here. So I'm going to do a builder here 
get that over a little bit. Uh, and inside that, I have to say return. And I'm going to get rid of this. I'm going to return my drop down option here. Now, let's see, where's the drop down option end? So after that ends, I'm going to need another brace to close off this. So let's see, oh, by bracing. So this is this set state uh, here. This is this drop down here. So return, after a return here, I need a semicolon. Uh, and then this will be good. Okay, so that looks good. Um, so that's the first part, uh, and then rather than saying on change uh, set state, I have to do a my drop down state. What I'm doing is creating a special state just for this drop down window, and I'm giving it some name. I'm uh, naming it drop down state. So here, rather than saying set state, I'm going to say down drop down state. Update that. So again, you don't have to do this. It just uh, bothers some students. So I'm just going to show you how to do it now. If I run this. It plus, if I switch this to large, it shows large. So again, it's going to update the state of this uh, every time I select this. So I've created a, um, a little state uh, within this by doing this uh, here. And I can place my order. Um, mushroom and sausage. Pizza, place the order, and there's my small mushroom sausage pizza. Now it's not displayed very nicely, so let's work on that next. So again, we've done most of this, um, but we kind of skipped over this list tile and card stuff. So let's look at that uh, here. So going back to my code here, um, this is my um, add pizza method here. Uh, with this large thing and then this is back to my scaffold and inside my scaffold I have a list builder and I'm returning a text here so this I don't want to just return a text here I want to return um, something more interesting and we generally return things like a list builder so let's look at our common objects here and scroll down to lists uh, uh, a list tile that's what I want so I have a list builder I'm going to return a list tile here so I'm going to change this. Instead of text, I'm going to say list tile. Uh, not time, tile. OK. Now inside a list tile, I can have a number of properties uh, that I can kind of see over here. I can have a title. And that will be could be my description. That should be fine. Uh, I can have a subtitle if I want. Uh, so. And I could do some other text here. Uh, for this. Now, with the title, uh, it's giving me a line here because it's just a string. So again, this has to be a widget. So I need to surround this with a text. Uh, oops. So it has to be inside a text. That's a string has to be inside a text. Which, okay, so a title, subtitle, and again, maybe a uh, leading icon here. Um, I'm going to move. These are indented too much. Uh, okay. And a, a leading or a trailing icon. Uh, and I'm just going to use icon as my widget. And if I type icons, icons dot, there's a whole bunch of icons. If I type pizza, let's see if there's a pizza, there's a little pizza icon there. Okay, so here's my list tile. Uh, a t title is the description. Subtitle is some subtitle. Uh, leading is the image of the pizza. So now with that, let's go back here. Order pizza. Small, let's do a medium chicken pizza. So again, little icon here, medium chicken pizza. And I don't have a subtitle right now, but it's just displaying that. So change that, or let's order the same one again. Uh, so you can order, so you can see these. Now, you can change these around a little bit if you want. Uh, for example, I often like to put a card there. So that's why we suggest uh, 
using a card it'll just wrap this around a nice little layout here so let's go back and do that if we want so inside our list tile i'm just going to right click and say wrap in it doesn't have a card so i'm just going to choose center because i know card has a child but i also know center uh has a child uh here rather than some of these have children and I want one that has the same. It'll be easier to cut and paste. And I, I guess I just do this. I could just type it in. I just get lazy. So show context. I'm going to wrap it in a center uh, here. And I'm just going to change this uh, to card instead of center. And child here. So now if I run this, wait for it to update. Uh, it's like my pizza. Order it. Uh, you can see this kind of gray or this card here if you want. Now, if you really want to stand out, you can set a color to the card. So if I want to set a color to this, uh, every card just has a color attribute. And I can just say colors.blue uh, here. If I move over this, it, I can select a type of blue. Maybe I want a lighter blue here, like a blue 100 or blue 50. I can do a uh, blue with only 50, 100 here. Um, oops, I don't know why I typed it in there. Card here, blue 50, uh, 100, let's do it right there. Okay, that's better. So now if I go in here, order my pizzas um, it'll show me uh, this as a separate blue card uh, for this okay it looks looks nice I don't have a subtitle here but again some bonus things is you can uh, put the uh, price of the pizza in the subtitle widget here is a bonus thing so now I have this all done. I added this builder. Uh, I mean, I added the card here. I could, if I wanted, change some of the layouts. So if it bothers you, I mean, you can add some things here. Like maybe you want to center this. I never like it that it's over here. So again, you can look at uh, that. How do I center? So where is that? That's when I'm building my dialogue. I'm displaying a text view, and the text view isn't centered. Uh, so how do I? Do that so you can look up text view, do a Google search on text, you know, flutter text view uh, values or something like that. Uh, but um, so in there, so here I can rather than just specify a controller, if I want it centered, I could also specify um, a text align. And there's, let's see, text align dot center. there so now if I were to order my pizza and type uh, it would put it in the middle again you can change the size of these fonts and all this stuff uh, you can also change the, this dialogue is kind of big so we could change that if we want again this is just all optional uh, you certainly don't have to play with this but sometimes it's fun uh, to do some stuff here so again if I wanted to work with the whole dialogue window when I build the dialogue here uh, when I specify the columns, I could specify uh, the like the height of it is the main axis alignment and main axis alignment dot. Um, I think there's a smallest min I can specify for that. Oh, I don't want the alignment. That would be uh, if I want the whole thing centered. I want the main axis size uh, here and same here main main axis size dot min so now if I pop this up it'll be a smaller window for this uh, so again there's a thousand things we can do to format this but you get the idea okay uh, you can just when you're done here you can just submit this uh, here uh, you can go over the commit window again select your changes uh, finished learning activity Hit submit and push. Now remember, watch, you'll probably have warnings, so they'll pop up. Oh, mine didn't. You, sometimes they'll pop up a message here to say uh, you have warnings, you still want to submit, and you have to say yes. This is actually going to push. So make sure at some point you get to that 
that menu, that push dialog should pop up, and you should actually push it up there. And it should say pushed uh, here. Okay, hope that helped.